still Hearthstone Legendary Series. I'm Osmond Kitty once again joined by Frodan. We're a little more than halfway through the day. We're about to jump into the second semifinal between Trump and Ignite. What do you think about these two guys? Oh, uh, well, I'm, I'm happy either way, whoever comes to this land. Uh, Trump, uh, of course, everyone wants to see him win a major tournament. And it's, uh, it's tough because he's gotten way more chances than a lot of people. And it's starting to get to the point where people are like, well, Trump goes pretty far sometimes, you know, second yeah. place even in some of these events, uh, top four pretty consistently. But where is he ever going to be a tournament threat? And that's where, you know, a lot of people are like, ah, you know, I really want Trump to do well. In the meantime, Ignite represents uh, the faction of players who have tried really hard to make it without the invites. He's always had to work pretty much for uh, the places that he's gotten yep. in the scene. Um, whether every qualifier spot. And he's a talented enough player that he probably deserves to be on equal footing or even better than Trump because of his uh, history and his qualification list. And yet, despite all this, he still hasn't had the, uh, you know, the, the accolades and the, the invites and the popularity to justify it. So I, I wish that that would change a little bit, not because I don't want to see Trump, but because I think sometimes people like Ignite decide deserve to get more recognition over time. And I think if he can make it to this land, that might start changing if he can start performing well and really start putting his stamp more onto the scene. Yeah, and he said it's a big deal for him in other ways as well. He's never been to the U.S. before. So uh, if you're going to go to anywhere in the U.S., Southern California is not that bad of a place, um, especially if you're going there to play some Hearthstone because whenever I travel, I just end up playing Hearthstone the whole time anyway. So getting paid to go there and play Hearthstone would be even better. Uh, Trump, on the other hand, first time we're seeing him today since he did get that walkover match. Bub Senpai, of course, couldn't make it. Uh, actually had a pretty decent run through his Legendary Series week. He was one of the invited players uh, for week number two. Uh, he had an overall game score of seven wins and four losses. Uh, he was actually one of the players that uh, he placed first in his group during that Legendary week and made it uh, direct by the semifinals. And then lost in the first round. And then lost in, in the semifinals yeah. um, to Roger, who didn't even go on to win. So he had a really great first day and then a really heartbreaking second day is what it came down to. I mean, his wins in the first day were 3-1 and 3-0. And it looked like he was poised to take the whole week pretty convincingly um, and then just had a, a shutdown. He made a lot of misplays on the second day. Uh, didn't seem like he was on his game. So we'll see. Um, it, it, I think it had a lot to do with him just warming up. And we'll, I don't know if he's played any... Hearthstone yet today, if he's warmed up with his decks, if he's if he's feeling on fire. I was no, you're asking the wrong person, man. You're looking at me as if I, I know the answer. No, I was actually looking at you because I was about to make a really great pun, but couldn't string it together the last second. Why not? On fire, ignite. Not seeing it, dude. Nope. What are you, what are you talking about? Yep. Doesn't exist. Trump has the... Quintessential lineup that we've been kind of expecting here, the Warlock, Warrior, and the Hunter. But there is still room for variation. Is it the mid-range Hunter? We haven't seen too much of that today. We've seen a lot of face Hunters. Is it the uh, slow one that has, you know, Ragnaros and some other, like, heavy-hitting cards? Or is it going to be the more aggressive one that wants to rush the opponent down? We do know Ignite's lists. So we have done. the Handlock coming in from Ignite. Trump seems to have the Control Warrior, and that's a deck that he's climbed a lot of ladder in the past with. Yep. Yeah. Watching Trump ladder the other day with Grim Patient Warrior. Yeah, it looked very frustrating to play, and it was also very frustrating to watch. Um, he had a mixture of uh, not knowing what, what moves to make and also terrible luck. Oh, and here we go. Dragon is it Dragon Warrior? warrior. Or it is, dragon is it warrior. just Control Warrior with you, Sarah? No, it's Dragon Warrior. How many dragons does it have to have for it to be Dragon Warrior? Does it need to have any dragon tech like Black and Corruptor? Yeah. That's Dennis Dragon Warrior. What but if it, it just it, has dragons it, and no Black and Corruptors? Is it still for Dragon Warrior? Yeah, because there's dragons. <laughs> so if it just has one Ysera, then it's technically Dragon Warrior. Dra yeah, we didn't see Dragon's Warrior. We said Dragon Warrior. Okay. There you go. There you have it. Well, Shield Block's pretty good. Yeah, Shield Block, Shield Slam allows him to deal with it. On the opposite end, he also can just kill it with just straight-up Death Spite. Yep. Uh, he did, did coin it, which means he doesn't have to worry about Mountain Giant. His only worry would be to go for, um, like, some kind of taunt, like a 
Sudden Fury Protect on an Ancient Watch. Yeah, I think he needs to utilize the armor while he has it. Because if he attacks in both times of the Death Bite, he gives up the opportunity for him to use Shield, um, shield Block, Shield Slam on a bigger threat in the next coming turns. you got to use the removal when you're given it. Yeah, that's it. I don't think I would have minded the Death Bite, personally. Because he can't play Sludge Belcher, so... He would have had to given up a lot, and you still would have the ability to do it. You're you're not in a rush to protect your health too much in this matchup. All right, it's bringing me flashbacks, Dan. To the good old days. To the good old days. Well, the important thing is that neither player truly um, takes control of the board a lot. They're fighting over it. The warrior player is the one that's looking to see if he can grab an early kill of anything. Yeah. But once uh, you hit a hard switch, the handlock just starts dropping these big bombs. Uh, Warrior needs to have the removal, and if they don't, they get blown out. This is pretty fitting, but he, have you read the Aragon series of books? Isn't that a guy in Lord of the Rings? No, that's Aragorn. Common misconception. So this is not like a no, spin-off No, it's a, it's a separate book series. About the guy from Lord of the Rings. <laughs> sure. Okay. We'll go with that. Okay. Well, in this... Uh, there's like these wizards or mages that do battle with their minds. So they battle That's with. That's not Lord of the Rings? <laughs> no, no. They battle with their swords, but at the same time, they're also having a battle in their, bra in their minds. So their swords are just sort of tools for them to buy time while they're doing battle with their minds. So this. Kind of like the Matrix. So this matchup is sort of similar. Like there's not much damage going on on the board. Just like in, in, that, in that book series, the mages that do battle, or the magicians that do battle. Um, not, not a lot of fancy stuff is going into the sword. It's not all about the physicality of it. It's, it's, about, the, it's, about, the it's about the mind. It's people, all in the mind. People that have read Ar Aragon are, are not in their head like, yeah, he's right. And people who haven't? People who haven't are like, I don't remember that from Lord of the Rings. <laughs> Boring. Where's the part where Frodo <laughs> gets carried by Sam? <laughs> 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 that was... Kind of like you're carrying me in the broadcast. <laughs> that was like your highlight of oh, Lord of the Rings was, <laughs> was when Frodo carried Sam. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Really? That's the ultimate sign of loyalty and friendship. The camaraderie. There's like I a can't giant... carry the ring for you, <laughs> but I can carry you. <laughs> oh, Sam carrying Frodo, sorry. That's exactly Got what TJ up. said to me right before we started broadcast. <laughs> I can't cast for you, but I can't carry you. That was supposed to be the between us. <laughs> <laughs> our, our Lord of the Rings role play is supposed to stay behind closed doors. This is a really cute play from McKnight to uh, shut down the armor smith and complicate the death spite. Oh. Baiting out the cool taskmaster uh, would be great. Um, or, you know, on the opposite side, the Blackwing Corruptor would get shut out or thrown out and then... Mm. Um, you know, then he would have to use Dark Bomb in, in the second Mortal Coil. Yep. In this case, it's a little bit awkward. Would you be in favor of tossing away the Death Bite or uh, Death Rattle and then using the Fiery War Axe here? Um, uh, maybe Trump's too valued to do that. Yeah. There's no rush. There's really no rush. I don't know if that's necessarily too value-oriented. I'd say that's more value-oriented. Because in this situation, you're actually wasting the death by death rattle. You're doing two damage to a defender of Argus, which would die anyway. Um, I would have just re-equipped and attacked with Fire War Axe since my, your hand is clogged with weapons anyway. Like, when else are you going to use a Fire War Axe? Well, I think he really wants to get this Yusera out next turn. That's also okay. That's, yeah, that's... It's more than All okay. right. I dream the world this is his... Trump Sarah. card. Oh my god. <laughs> All of his cards news. are Trump cards. <laughs> In other news, TJ Sanders has been relieved of his commentary duties. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. See, the thing about it is that it wasn't you, is it, you weren't even trying at that point, <laughs> TJ. I liked young, hungry TJ who really wanted to, to make the good puns. But you've gotten complacent. I tried to make a good pun earlier, and you just looked at me like I was some kind of animal. No, I laughed. You laughed? Yeah, I laughed so hard. You know, like when <laughs> wheels spin so fast, it looks like they're not moving? Yep. I, I was laughing so hard that my lips did not look like it was smiling. Okay. It didn't curl. I'll give you the, ben I'll give you the benefit yeah. of the overwhelming doubt. It's the hummingbird effect. Oh, yeah. That's 
So looking at this state of the board here, you can't play spells, which is okay. Um, Ysera clearly has not gotten removed or even silenced. So you can make so many extrapolations on like what your opponent's been holding at this point. He has to be holding like cards, which like you know he doesn't really have much uh, direct spot removal. So you can play cards like Sludge Belcher, but um, it has to be protected because of Lotheb. So I think. You know, he wants to try to figure out what's the best possible scenario of cards here to protect his Yosera, because that's, like, the big thing. It's super awkward, because everything that you have is, like, four damage. You have yeah. Despite, which is four damage, Krom, four damage, Yosera, four damage. I still don't mind playing uh, Sludge Belcher here, though. Oh, yeah, yeah, I was going to say. Um, and then, like, Laughing Sister. Yeah. Laughing Sister, the um, best dream card. It's the only dream card. Is there another dream card besides Laughing Sister? Uh, no. There used to be one, but I'm pretty sure they took it out of the game. Oh, cool. Is this the new thing that came out with Black Rock Mountain? Yeah. You know how trippy it would be if all of a sudden that Nightmare card had Raynad with no eyebrows on it? <laughs> <laughs> that would be trippy if you inserted that line in anything. You know what would be trippy? You could point at anything. If that lamppost had right that space with no well, eyebrows no, on it. no, specifically that it was the fact that you said you had a dream. And a, yeah. It was an, yeah, okay. Oh, oh, it was a pun and a joke. Yeah. Whoa. Oh, my goodness. Right over my head. See, TJ, that's how you do it. You and your weird nightmares and dreams. For those of you who don't know, TJ had a weird nightmare of Raynette having no eyebrows and paintings and keep staring at him like the Mona Lisa. The uh, uh, Emperor Thorson here would make things really cheap, although it's one of those things where uh, Ysera has gotten so much ridiculous value here. Yeah. Jeez. And Starry Night, where all the stars were little miniature faces of Raynette with no eyebrows. Just thought I'd throw that in there as one of the examples. Nightmare can be a huge damage burst in combination with Grom. Oh, yeah. Wait, how much damage does he have right now? A lot. Uh, 4, 7, 10, 19. I wonder. Yeah. Wow, he has so much damage. If he had a Grom activator. Yeah. Like, uh, if this was a Death Spite equipped instead of uh, Fire War Axe. Shield block. Yeah. Fair enough. I mean, he legitimately might consider just using Death Spite, what like screwing the first, like forget the first charge, or second charge of uh, Fire War, actually yeah. use Death Spite to kill off the uh, Lotheb. Yep. I definitely would agree with doing that. That said, it's very easy for Handlock to be defensive. There's so many taunts. You know, it's, no, it's not a marathon. It's definitely, or it's not a sprint. It's definitely a, a marathon. Mm -hmm. Whatever generic terms you want to use. Could be a metaphor for almost anything. For life. Yeah. For relationships. Mm -hmm. And control warrior versus handlock. Yeah. And also the Boston Marathon. That's also not a sprint. Nope. Otherwise, it'd be called the Boston Sprint. <laughs> Great observation, Dan. Top notch. Jeez, he's got two big game hunters, which is supposed to be removal for the big threats, but he's got nothing to target on. But he can play Mountain Giant <laughs> Dr. Boom for nine mana. Yeah. All right, what's the maximum possible damage he could do this turn? 21. Four. If he had, like, yeah. if he drew Cruel Taskmaster, it'd be 41 damage. To or 41. <laughs> 21 damage. <clears throat> well, he's got big game hunter drawn, which is pretty convenient. You know what he can do? He can nightmare his Ysera and then uh, and then Iron Beacon. Ah, that's, that's dumb. Never mind. <coughs> I was thinking of a play. To, thinking you know, outside a the creative box, yeah. play, but yeah, I, that's stupid. And to be honest, Brawl might even be. The this nightmare and the Gromosh is definitely like a really key way to end the game. So why do you want to throw it away? Yeah. So you can play big game Hunter. I wonder. Really like That's brawl. seven mana. Mm -hmm. Brawl? Yeah. <clears throat> there's there's not really any way you preserve your Sarah. 
That's for true. another turn anyway. That's true. Um, but wouldn't you want the extra card? <laughs> you can get one extra. Could you just card, use yeah. Death Bite, hit the face, uh, use Arrow to the face, and then just like wait for the Molten Giants to come out and, bra and then brawl afterwards? Yeah. Even drop the Emerald Drake here. No, uh, wait. The Emerald Drake would get Shadow from him, so you just armor up. Yeah. So then uh, Ignite on the opposite end. It's like, well, he's got Death Bite. I 14 health. Hmm. I wonder what's happening next. Maybe I should taunt up. <coughs> Excuse me. Well, all right. So if he taps here, puts himself at 12, can play um, Molten Giants for one. Man, Sarah's been alive for like six turns, five turns. Valiant effort by Sarah. Yeah, got Nightmare. Um, Two but Emerald Drakes, Laughing Sister. Yeah, and then it was played on. So it lived for, yeah, five turns? Yeah. Four turns? Four turns. Yeah. <coughs> Is it Molten Giant time? Yeah. You, Molten uh, Giant, but I don't know if you want to extend here. Um, you can tap, play one Molten Giant, Antique Heelbot, and Defender of Argus. Ooh, that right. might... I like that. I like that a lot. Pitch occurred perfectly. You're not overextending on the board, so if Brawl comes out, you're not too unhappy. One thing, though, is... Ah! No, no. You are giving up your def uh, your defender, though, which yeah, means that's you have no taunts after that. Yeah. Do, you do have ant another antique heal bot, though, in order to sort of buy some more time, but... I think, I mean, you've, you know your opponent has three dream cards in your hand. You can't really afford to say, you know what? I'm going to put myself at 20 health, but oh, not that, put any taunts up. I think that's game. He silences the giant, attacks the with the weapon onto the 2-2. Two -two, yep. Throws out and grow a mosh, put Nightmare on it, and that's 15 damage. Mm -hmm. That is correct. Or use Sylvanas Brawl and steal whatever comes out. <laughs> but I think you should do grow a mosh here. <laughs> oh, you think you should go for lethal instead? Well, some people <laughs> get really excited by the ridiculous combos, right? Yeah, yeah. And Ignite's going to see the Nightmare. He's going to be like, okay, cool. So... So what? And then you just realize he has the Iron Beak Owl. Like, what's for two mana that can get past this taunt? Iron Beak Is it Owl. Execute? It's like, nope, it's the Iron Beak Owl. And that wraps up game one. Trump's on the board with an early lead, shutting down the handlock. It's pretty good. Taking one with the Control or Warrior early on as well is uh, pretty decent. Trump's going to have Hunter, which has had a ridiculous win rate so far um, today in, in the uh, Group A of Legendary Series Redemption mm -hmm. Tournament. And... Um, Warlock left, yep. which seems to be one of, one of Trump's most comfortable decks. The Warlock is definitely the class that Trump's played of a lot. Uh, I've, I've seen him play a lot of Handlock and Zoo at this point. Yep. Um, and what's interesting is that it seems like we don't see Demon Lock anymore, because with Grim Patron being so powerful, Mountain Giants are also like a big relevant threat again. And um, you know you don't really want too many of the small demons that people like really yeah. take advantage of to try to use Grim Patient to get a bunch of synergy. So, I think uh, it's really interesting to see that Handlock, despite the way the metagame's been trending, has actually reverted back to almost its normal state. Yep. The lack of Draxus, though. I don't mind it. Yeah. You've got Doctor Boom. <laughs> great, He's like an appropriate great replacement. He's got an appropriate nanny. You know, like, Jaraxxus is cool. He's, like, the father, you know, the big daddy of the deck. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, Dr. Boom is an appropriate uncle. Very disturbing analogy, but I would say it's spot on. Yeah. Um, so, at this point, Ignite, has he switched decks a lot? Uh, no, he actually stuck, stuck on his Warlock, remember? He was losing, and he just refused to switch from his Handlock. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. So, if we go by that logic, uh, by his tendencies in the past series, then probably going to uh, stick with the handlock here. Could yeah. end up seeing a handlock versus handlock mirror, but if I was Trump, I'd just throw it to Hunter. Yeah, Hunter. Well, it's against Mage, right? It's Mech Mage, so Hunter is okay in both spots. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't mind too much. Yeah. That now, way you give yourself three opportunities to win with the handlock in the... In the if you if you take a victory here, which solid. is I'd say is actually pretty likely, because your Hunter has a lot of strong matchups against Ignite's lineup, uh, giving yourself three opportunities to win with what arguably would be Trump's most comfortable deck, probably strong deck overall as well, would put him in a great position to move on to the finals. Yeah, I think so as well. On the flip side, I don't think it really truly matters too much. Um, I think you can just 
go for whatever deck you feel the most comfortable and overall the best percentages. So I think if you if your opponent's playing Nash Equilibrium, then you do the same exact thing. But if he's not, then just go ahead and play Rochambeau and just toss out whatever you want. Rochambeau. Yeah. I know what that is. Good. Awesome. Dark Paper Scissors. Yeah. Not to be confused with Show Rambo. <laughs> Which is... Wasn't that, uh, that like Rambo the, the hunter dude? The, the action star, Rambo? Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah show Rambo. The guy from Lord of the Rings. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the guy from Lord of the Rings. <laughs> All right. Sorry I had to do it. <laughs> no worries. No worries. Hunter vs. Hunter is how we're going to go things from now on. Now, Ignite plays the face hunter. He's switching. And Trump is, has to switch. He's going to play the hunter. If he's playing the mid-range hunter, he might be in some trouble. But it's not unwinnable. It's just hard. Yeah. Uh, very hard. Um, I would say a lot depends on do you have some of the comeback cards like the knife jugglers with the Unleashed the Hounds. Yeah. So these are real statistics. Um, now, I'm, I'm pulling these from memory. So they might be slightly inaccurate, but most of, uh, like, mostly true. Like, the idea is true. Not like the 9 out of 10. Uh, oh, so you, you made that up. <laughs> well, it was, it was like a, a figure of speech. Um, I recorded probably about 60 mid-range hunter games at the beginning of the season after I uh, had uh, Hint Legend. And I think, uh, I believe 10, either 9 or 10, were against Face Hunter. So my mid-range hunter versus my opponent's Face Hunter. And I lost all but one. So it's a small sample size, but it's a deck that I felt pretty comfortable with and a matchup that I felt like I, I knew well, but it's just really tough. And uh, it's funny because that's almost nine times out of ten. <laughs> you lose. It just ironically ended up that way. Um, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> wow, TJ, you're ridiculous. <laughs> but that's, that's actually You are such a meme. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> just a walking, living embodiment of a meme. No, but... That's just my personal experience with the matchup, and it's really tough. Because, you, I, well, I, you know, I want as a follow up, since you have a lot of experience, what do you throw away from these hands? I mean, the pilot shredder might be too slow, or definitely is too slow. You want to curve out, but do you throw away the unleashed the hounds at all? No. Uh, this is actually one of the only matchups that I will keep oh, on. Never mind. Trump's playing face on it. Okay. Well, in, in that case, he he had the wait wait. Oh, sorry. No, no, no. It's the other way around. Yeah. Um, I think unleash the hounds yeah. is. What you can't afford to do is not have answers. What you can't afford to do is have a handful of, of not, like, just passive cards. Like, if you have, like, Haunted Creeper, Animal Companion, into, like, Pilot and Shredder, like, even though that seems like a good curve and a good hand, that's going to lose you games because you have no proactive threats. Um, the best thing you can do is have, like, a good threat early on, like a Knife Juggler or a Haunted Creeper, and then be able to... Uh, unleash the hounds afterwards to clear clear up the board and give yourself the initiative going into the next turn. Like you'll never win the game if you're c you're constantly having to trade into their creatures, and a lot of times you won't win a race. So I do keep it there. Granted, my eight losses out of nine games might tell you something different, but that's just my reasoning behind it. Oh, freezing trap is brutal here, by the way. Yeah. I really wonder, you know, Trump was thinking about the Leopard Gnome versus the Haunted Creeper, but because he chose to go for that instead, he ends up getting punished a lot. Yeah. A lot, a lot. In fact, this this could be just like almost already the tipping point of a little bit getting too much damage taken upon him, and he would need like a miraculous sequence of events. Like he needs to get Misha off this uh, Animal Companion. Oh, no, I mean, you literally have to kill them while you're at like two health. Right, like it's super tight. N no matter what, you're you're gonna die the next. You're gonna die a, a a turn after you kill them, or you're gonna you're not gonna kill them and you're gonna die anyway. Like that's the the only thing that's gonna happen. So, the way you do it is to try and clear the board. It's, it's a similar way that you play Zoo in this matchup. Hmm. You try and control the board early, and at some point you just have to say, you know what, screw it, I'm gonna race. Um, and you have a lot more burn than they do because your creatures are bigger. Like, if you could swing once with the Savannah High Main, sometimes you can win the next turn, like on turn 7. But it's sometimes it's unlikely that you even live that long. Which seems yeah. odd, but it's likely. He's working at 
effectively four less health than what he has, whatever this turn finishes on. Uh, if Ignite chooses to... Well, he might choose to kill out this Leoc now so that Unleash the Hounds and other things would be a lot less powerful. He's yeah. worried because his opponent still has coin too, so he could have coin, knife juggle, and unleash the hounds. Yep. Mm -hmm. But even if he does, Chomp effectively has 15 health right now. He's already halfway killing him on turn four. And he has Animal Companion Kill Command, which are two fantastic finishers. Finishers. If they roll hover. Or when they roll hover. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's more like it. I mean, even if it rolls Leak, a lot of times you have um, creatures on the board that can utilize that. And having somebody in a proc the kill command is a big deal. Quickly. Proc the, by proccing the kill command, I mean activating the five damage instead of the three. I think Ignite's far enough ahead where he could just try to maximize his damage and push for the win. He's got um, 15 health remaining, so kill command would be at 10 hero power. You're going to probably hear probably the same turn. Yeah. So that's seven. Animal, I guess Animal Companion is the big limiting factor, so he chooses to be extra safe. Also, in the mirror matchup, Explosive Trap becomes very problematic. Um, you see him freezing, so naturally the next one is probably Explosive. So now you have to deal with this Mad Scientist, which is continuously doing two damage. But also the fact that once you build up right. a board, it could all be taken away from you if he has Explosive Trap. And if you have to play around Explosive Trap and trade into his creatures, you've already lost. I mean... Is Trump going to try and go for a big juggle play, like I use quick shot and then coin? <laughs> Abusive, Sergeant. That's what he's been reduced to because of the start that he's had. Oh, man. <laughs> this is the only play. But, I mean, even if he does it, it's still a really tough road to come back. But he needs to hit this, kni uh, this knife, and he does end up landing on the Lepernome. Still, though... Still, though, it's a little tough. Oh, 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 oh. That, is, that is a freezing trap, by the way. Yeah. A two freezing trap in Face Hunter. Interesting. Interesting. Very interesting. Yeah, that is. Huh. We saw the evolution. At the beginning, Face Hunters were all about the explosive. Right. Over time, they realized that freezing trap could actually disrupt enough that it gets more damage in. It, yeah. it goes both ways. It depends on what the good, what's good in the meta, right? Yeah. If they have Warsong Commander and Grim Patron, it's like, well, Grim Patron actually gets sent back to the hand. Mm -hmm. Instead of getting another one. Freezing Trap gives him zero Grim Patrons. Right. Explosive Trap gives him two. If you expect Freezing Trap number two, should you attack with the Beast Sergeant first? Because you might be able to play both. <laughs> Oh, he thinks it might be explosive, so he's trying to go for the juggles instead. Oh, no. He thinks it's an explosive trap. He is going to get some really bad If news. this juggle hits the face. face and he attacks into the Leoc, well, now at least he can kill the Leoc. Oh. Well, that's actually okay, because now he doesn't have to trade the knife juggler. I think he'd rather bounce the abuse sergeant back into the hand, though. So he ends up trading the knife juggler instead. So no more secrets. Well, actually, that we don't know about that. Maybe Ignite has another explosive trap. Well, this isn't the best of hand for Ignite. I mean, right. he's got some turns to be able to push through, but knife juggler just gets eaten up by abusive sergeant. Iron Peak Owl on a Haunter Creeper is not really that effective. Um, and kill command in the hand is great for burn, but doesn't really help him right now. In the reality, next turn, Savannah Highway is going to come down. Right. If he, well, the, he wants to keep the Iron, yeah, Iron Beak out for the kill command. The Knife Juggler is just is like stalling. But uh, he's still going to need four more points of damage coming from somewhere. And Trump can start turning on the gas with Savannah Highway. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, dropping the Iron Beak out so he foregoes. It was going for the juggle Ooh. onto the Beast Sergeant, but it isn't even working out. This is a lot of damage over a couple turns. Yeah, so basically Trump is three turns away from victory here. His timing can hit twice. Mm -hmm. And his opponent doesn't have, have freezing trap anymore. But Ignite just needs to hit Charger right here. No, Mad Scientist is not it. And there's a good chance that Mad Scientist wouldn't even pull a secret. 
Depends how many secrets he runs, but we see two freezing well, traps. Here's so another far. thing. Trump also needs to find a way to stop that mess from doing damage. Can he afford to? Six, ten. You have to have lethal next turn. His opponent is one damage off. Lake Knight just needs one damage. He can't. He just has to go. You're, you're talking about that you win this game sometimes by one or two points of health. Yeah. And Trump right now is working with one effective hit point. He ignites a beast or a charger. No, it's not that beast. Hi, main. Wait, he's playing. What? Mid range well, that, with leper gnomes. Well, that explains um, the double no, no, freezing. It explains the double freezing. Okay. But um, more specifically, Trump also has leper gnomes in mid range, too, so. So, TJ, you said you were the mid-range expert here, so I guess that's the deck that everyone's running nowadays. Well, there you go. What? It's that iced fat guy that I mentioned earlier. Yeah. He's probably watching right now like, whoa, that's my name. <laughs> or maybe fail fishing because, uh, you know, we didn't, we didn't get to predict it. Yeah. Is there anything that he has in his deck that can help him too here? Secret? No. So he hopes his opponent doesn't have any damage. But Trump's gonna win! Right here! Wow. Wow. And Glaive Zuka, so it is like a hybrid. Right. So it's this like is the list I guess that people are playing. I personally yeah. have not played a lot of mid-range hunter uh, in the recent times. So I, I don't even know, man. Like when I see Glaive Zuka, Lepernome, Abuse Sergeant, I think Figus Hunter. Like what am I supposed to think? Yeah. And when then they all of a sudden pull out the high main, you're like, oh, okay. So then they must have, uh, uh, and the pilot shredder is also pretty ambiguous too. It's like that could be in the face hunter, that could be in the mid range. I think what's starting to happen is that uh, hunters are starting to blur in between. But the thing is, I need a hunter expert to really tell me what happened. So yeah, there's um, actually been um, TJ. I am the disappoint. There actually there have been a lot of hunter players that have been putting in stranglethorn tiger as well. Just like the old school? Yeah, old yeah. school Strength of Tiger into Houndmaster combination. It's guaranteed seven damage almost. I know um, Stan Sifko was playing around with Snipe in his deck because Snipe would be good against... Uh, Love Snipe. Would be really good against the Warsong Commander stuff because they play Warsong and then you Snipe. <laughs> yeah. It's really awesome. Uh, no, it, I think... Um, and he played with no cook commands and he got top 10 legend. It was really weird, but Stan Sifko is just like a really smart player, so mm. I, it's really hard to play that deck. That was the only mid-range hunter game that I have experience with in the past week. I haven't really seen this hybrid face hybrid mid-range. It's just no. like it's like faster. It's like let's just call it fast hunter like that. I mean, granted, a lot of my experience comes from ladder, um, either ladder or talking with players from tournaments. Okay. And I mean, there there could be um, a situation where they don't want to give away their secrets to me. Sure. And ladder is such a different environment from from tournaments. But a lot of tournament players do get a lot ideas for their decks from the ladder. So. Uh, these are sort of different from any... Well, actually, not really, because we haven't really seen the bottom 15 cards. Um, I saw Glaive Zuka, Abyss of Sergeant decks that had Stranglethorn Tiger. Uh, that's what... I've seen those quite frequently. But we didn't see Houndmaster, I don't think. Um, didn't see any Tigers. So right now, it just seems like it's a face hunter, but with Savannah Highmates and perhaps Pilot of Shredder. It does seem that the line is sort of blurring out a little bit, but... Uh, Trump Just is no actually Wolf Riders and stuff. Yeah, yeah, we uh, didn't see Wolf Rider. Did see Arcane Golem though. Yeah. Super weird. It it is really weird. Um, but Trump is actually two games up. He's one game away from securing a spot in the final against Savits and being one game away from moving on to the Legendary Series LAN Finals. He's got three opportunities to take one win with what appears to be handlock, and this is going to be the first time that we've seen his handlock today. He's going to want to go for the mirror matchup from Ignite's point of view. He knows that Trump really likes handlock. He also feels like, you know, sometimes Trump would be willing to pull out the zoo. The advantage is definitely in Trump's camp here to start things off. He has the information battle, right? So Ignite, how is he going to put Trump on zoo, or is he going to put him on the handlock? Handlock. You think so? But as soon as you put Trump on handlock, he puts out Zoo. He's the he's Zoo. And as soon as you put him on both, he's Murlocs. <laughs> he's Murlocs. <laughs> and as soon as you put him on all three, he's Dragonlock. <gasps> or you you he mind games you into thinking that the icon was a warlock when in reality it was a different class altogether. I don't know. You could confuse Warrior for a few other things because Warrior like is a sword. So I guess you could. 
Like a paladin. Yeah, confuse it with paladin or something. Yeah. yeah. Warlock's just a purple hand. Yeah. Can't get to confuse that with anything. I have no idea. <laughs> Alright, well, the Waking Mulligan uh, seemed like he was hedging his bets for handlock because he kept two big threats. Yeah. Oh, man. Is Trump doing the old, uh, I might be playing Zoo. I might have options. I might have a bad hand. And his opponent, like, coins out uh, Ancient Watcher <laughs> to try to respond to it. Trump, you sly dog, you. The jig is up. Double Mountain Giant all the way. Or Zoo with a bad hand. I mean, this is what Ignite was preparing for. He's got double Big Game Hunter in the deck, and he draws into one. And uh, Trump does have the long game, though, right? He's got that Draxus in his deck. Yep. That is an extra big legendary minion. Draxus can make the difference a lot of times in handlock versus handlock. Um, oh, yeah. Well, I mean, it used to be every deck had Draxus. It was like the first player to play Draxus had a big advantage because if, if you play Draxus, it's hard for the other opposing handlock to find a safe turn so to play Draxus. To play Draxus. But to effectively do nothing but put yourself at 15 health. So, in a matchup where the other player doesn't have Draxus at all, that can give you a huge advantage. They're counting on you having a finite amount of threats. All of a sudden, you're pulling out a 6-6 Infernal every turn. As long as you can do it safely, that gives you a significant advantage. We talk about significant advantage, the tempo swing from this play. The good old bait and switch. Oh no, I have a helpless 4-8 Twilight Drake. <laughs> Whatever will I do? <laughs> BGH. That goes back to a point that I made earlier, that coining out a, a Twilight Drake in the handlock mirror. Oh, interesting. Is a tell that you have BGH. I was not uh, foreseeing Trump to just simply plop the second giant to challenge both. Why not? I don't know. Just part of me thought, like, you wouldn't let that trade two for one. Or, like, I guess... Let that trade for more, just just two for one. Like Mountain Giant single-handedly can just control the state of the board for a long time. I, I would have anticipated tap and like Dark Bomb or, or something else, and then try to fit in the Mountain Giant while being able to do like, a big Taunt play or big Game Hunter play. Because what happens is say like, say like his, he played tap Dark Bomb, mm -hmm. and then um, his opponent, uh, played uh the Mountain Giant. Then he could play his own Mountain Giant big Game Hunter. And then he would have an 8 8 on board, while his opponent would have a 4 8 and nothing else. He would be taking a little bit more damage to the face, but of course, you're always worried about Golden Giants. Huh. And he holds. Lining it up for Mortal Coil. Ideally. Yeah, this is interesting, too, because of the possibility of Farseer. Because if Farseer comes, then I know I can understand that he just he wants to make this like weak purposely because of uh, Mortal Coil. I guess if Farseer did happen, then um, he still has Hellfire and Mortal Coil. Yeah, he has Farseer and Mortal Coil, so uh, Hellfire and Mortal Coil, so Ignite would be okay. Trump goes for a Defender of Argus play. Pretty basic, just complicated a little bit math wise, but nothing a little Hellfire can't take care of. Mm -hmm. A little bit annoying, just because he hellfires here. He's giving us giving up his whole board unless he, for some reason, doesn't attack into the ancient watcher. Uh, he could double Moto coil and keep the keep the Drake. Uh, you attack the one two into the ancient watcher. You uh, hellfire and double Moto coil, but the mountain giant gets a lot weaker. It might be better just to Moto coil the eight one and then play mountain giant. Uh, yes. And if you can do that, you might... Do you, can you get away with a tap? No, you can't. <laughs> so you should attack into the eight one, eight, the 9-2 uh, with the 1-2 slime. Then get the mortal coil. Eey. And in yeah. general, if you can dig deeper into your deck in this mirror and tap, you just generally have better options in general. So a tap here means that he's not satisfied. And I don't blame him. Look at him. He got an Ancient Watcher, two Mortal Coils, like in an Iron Beak. Those are really feeble cards. He only has one threat in his hand, so I don't really blame Ignite for wanting to tap. 
But he's just avoiding playing this uh, Mountain Giant. He really wants to get mileage out of his Twilight Drake as much as possible here. Yeah, there's so many things that you have to play around in uh, in that situation. Like by leaving the 5-6 Ancient Watcher up. Right. But by, um, it's but hard by doing to overextend so it here, that. TJ, he's actually left himself vulnerable to this big boom play. Yeah, he gave initiative over to uh, Trump, basically, by not playing a threat. But again, I mean, now this puts him into a situation where he doesn't have initiative. Okay. But he has options for removal, regardless right. of what's played with Shadow Flame Hellfire. I mean, he still has Hellfire plays here, you know? He can, um. Well, I guess that would definitely kill his own Twilight Drake. He's wanting to get miles to this Twilight Drake. Remember, this Twilight Drake came out on turn three, and yet it hasn't attacked for multiple turns now. And it doesn't even control the board that aggressively. If he Hellfires here, he can double Mortal Coil something. He can even silence his own Ancient Watcher to do some shenanigans as well. Hellfire isn't really clean. No, it's not. I'm just I'm trying to evaluate what's going on here. Of course, the, also the big concern is the threat of Dr. Boom. How much damage is that? 10? 11? Well, this is a oh, man. It's a decent middle ground, but I mean, he's got a big board. Yeah. Oh man, like big game hunter Shadow Flame, like almost takes care of the board. Actually, he doesn't even have the big game hunter. He no, can just he Shadow, Shadow Flame, Flame and Dark Bomb. Shadow Flame, the Mortal Ancient Coil. Watcher. I yeah, I think I want to keep Doctor Boom, so I'd Shadow Flame the Ancient Watcher and then just Dark Bomb, and then use uh, Mortal Coil. Yeah, I, that's seven mana though. Is there a more efficient way to do this with mana? Siphon Soul maybe, because Siphon Soul is so convenient. Uh, but if you Siphon Soul here, you're you're taking a lot of damage on so uh, Doctor Boom. Doctor Boom, yeah. So then, if you sh but Shadow Flame gives up your ability to fight back on board. Yeah. It is pretty good though. I mean, the Boom Bots alone might clean up. Here's another question. Do you attack with the Dr. Boom after everything's been said and done? Like to the face, given the choice? Alright, so he'd be at 8 man next turn. So he's gonna siphon. I think it so depends where the bombs go, to be honest. If you decide. So he chooses to keep the taunt instead. Okay. And then chooses to hold that 19 so his opponent can't play Molten Giant. Yep. So, there was a lot of outcomes, too, based off the way the Boombot RNG ended up panning out. So, based off how this is set up, um, Trump has a really big threat to follow up. He's got Jaraxxus next turn. And he's got a really good post Jaraxxus hand. But one of the biggest things that you fear with Jaraxxus is being able to just get destroyed on the counterattack. So, I really actually like defending the, um, the Ancient Watcher here if Trump chooses to plans to go for a Jaraxxus. I actually really like it a lot. The only thing is now that because the uh, Hellfire made Molten Giant Zero, he can Dark Bomb this Ancient Watcher. Yeah. And so, Dracus is a lot less safe. No worries. Can he rag? He can big game under that. And, uh, you know, he could rag. But Rag's still a little bit awkward, so I guess you'd rather Big Game Hunter, Sludge Mol Belcher. Sludge Belcher needs to come down before Jaraxxus. Oh, also Molten Giant should probably yeah. come down too before Jaraxxus. I was going to say Big Game Hunter. Tap um, Jirax uh, tap Molten. Yeah. I've got the beast yeah. He, he needs to play Big Game Hunter first and not overdraw. That's like a, something that a lot of handlock players sometimes make mistakes when they're first learning. Mm -hmm. Always tap first, but if you're going to overdraw, don't. Yeah. Sometimes you gotta throw away your coin. Oh yeah, for sure. If it's it, not a if bad the thing. Situation calls for it. Hey man, if you gotta throw away your coin, mm -hmm. you throw away your coin. It, you can look at it as you effectively treated your coin for a card. <laughs> if you really want to tap that much, do what you gotta do, buddy. This is always really scary too. The possibility that you might just die. And with a siphon soul, is that lethal? Siphon Soul. Oh, that is definitely lethal. You silence one minion, Siphon Soul the other, and you push for it. Trump is Whoa! going to the Grand Finals. And uh, I have to commend him, man. I really think this Handlock game was uh, a lot of ways you could have easily messed up. Handlock versus Handlock in general is really 
It's a tense. Just, you know, super nice edge. But uh, what a crushing defeat for Ignite as well, where I think, um, you know, he came really far, again, through the qualifiers. And he was mentioning the difficulty of finding this motivation when uh, you don't have a team and, the, you know, it's, it's really tough to, you know, stay in the, you know, in the eyeballs of the people all the yeah. time. Uh, my heart goes out to Ignite. I, I really hope that he still stays a competitive player because I really enjoy watching him. Yeah, he's he's he talked about it in the video that we watched earlier. He said it's hard when you don't have a team. It's hard to and you don't have a salary. It's hard to keep playing competitively. It's hard to find the motivation. And uh, he finished semifinals in both his regular season uh, legendary series week. Finished semifinals here in his group for the redemption tournament. It's rough, but uh, he did prove himself uh, to be a really good player. I wouldn't say he 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 misplayed or had any particularly bad games. Uh, uh, there's, I mean, you could always judge it based off of the the black and white of like results. So, for example, when he played um, Thorson instead of playing the anti kill bot, he died one game. So, like, there's those mistakes. Yeah. But it's really hard to always, you know, put him on that when he's considering all the other things he's playing around. You said yeah. he was playing around Arcane Golem, not Leroy Jenkins, and that extra damage ended up killing him. Which those it, type of things are yeah. like, re like really, really, really difficult. And even then. If you play around those things sometimes, all the time, and they're not there, you might lose. Yeah, I mean, we talked about it. it could have been a fantastic read if it was Arcane Gall. Right. He would have been one damage off being killed, but mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it just doesn't work out that way. But the Grand Finals are set for Group A of the Redemption Series here. It is going to be Savitz versus Trump. Wow, one of them's going to the Finals. Yeah. Or to the Land Finals. Yeah, both these guys were players that were invited originally. Uh, so I tweeted out a little bit of analysis earlier. In matches across Legendary Series, invited players have a 73% win rate in matches against qualified players. And then what about against other invited players? It's 50-50. <laughs> Trick question. No, 100%. Invited players win 100% of the time against invited players. No, because there's a winner and a loser. Yeah, but they also win against invited players. Okay, fair enough. Nine out of ten people agree with me. <laughs> <laughs> well played, well played. But the yeah. grand finals of Group A of the Redemption Tournament here at the ESL Legendary Series between Savitz and Trump will happen right after